was not fear. Fear is the mind killer. And fear is the little death that brings total obliteration. Face my fear. I'm permitted to pass over me. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Fear is the mind killer. The only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Fear is the mind killer. Nameless, unreasoning, unjustified terror. Fear is the mind killer. Which paralyzes needed effort. Fear is the mind killer. To convert retreat into advance. Listening to Is Daily Wednesday with the one true Niz and Paul Gordon, featuring Newsfire, Sky Knitter, and Liberty Tech. And now here are your hosts, the one true Niz and Paul Gordon. That's right. We are back. Our Christmas hiatus is over, and during the Christmas hiatus, Is Daily became is daily i mean it always is it always is was i know if you look back in the archives of history what, you're gonna see whatever the wonderful whiz it was whatever a wonderful way is it and we got new colors and we're all excited i was gonna open up the show and talk about the mma and the ufc and some exciting fights that happened recently but no i can't do that you know why i can't do that I don't sports because you're a nerdle. That's why. <laughs> See, I, you're, don't spro- I don't sports. <laughs> your your little headgear thing looks like uh, I I can't get his last name right, but but the UFC people, you guys know who I'm talking about. Habib Nagaram, whatever his name is, dude, 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 just did. You know, he, he. I think he can beat Conor McGregor, and uh, I'm just gonna stand on that. But he wears this hat is really known for and your microphone looks like his hat that's what made me think of the mma and the ufc's and <laughs> you're talking about my dead cat yeah <laughs> yeah that's exactly yeah. <laughs> it is cat. it is it's very similar to uh, the, this guy he's a russian dude man why can't his, his first name is khabib khabib habib whatever uh, he's pretty awesome dude he's a ground and pounder kind of guy he just takes you to the ground and he beats you senseless fun to watch good stuff but that would be too genteel for you right <laughs> i'll put my pinky in the air <laughs> <laughs> yes exactly with your with my, I'll sip little my tea pinky. with my pinky in the air right <laughs> so <laughs> So I get I I I I don't know. I I was gonna I was gonna spend an hour talking about the MMA, and now I don't know what the heck to talk about. I guess the show's over. Show's over, folks. You need everybody. <laughs> so we'll. I tell you what we'll do. Why don't we? Why don't we? Why don't we hit our first segment? Are you ready? Do that. All right, here we go. What are the big stories, the big headlines everyone else is focused on? And what, if anything, can we, who pursue the power to act without threat or action of physical force, learn from these stories? This is Newsfire. Set your news on fire. Yeah, you couldn't hear that bump, right? So you heard the silence. You're like, what are you doing, dude? 
dude, dude, you don't <laughs> you're have over there and You're like, you're giggling and smiling, <laughs> biting your lips. <laughs> yeah. No, it was playing the bump. The news just went totally bump. silent. <laughs> no, I was playing the bump. I was playing the news fire bump. We got a great story, though. And you, you got it open there because there's some quality uh, stuff here. Yeah. I, yeah, I yeah. mean the crap out of this. Well, for yeah, me, meme the crap. Exactly. I think I've created like three, maybe four memes for this. I Right. This is the greatest microchasm of society that I've it ever really seen. Is. Microchasm. Yes. Yeah. 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 Microchasm. Microchasm. Yeah. You know what? I'm yeah, gonna, yeah. I'm going to show the show title real here. Oh, I'm not, I don't have my audio on there. There. Her. What are the big stories, the big headlines everyone else is focused on? Oh, I, I hit the wrong. I, I went to hit the news fire bump all over again. But if you guys saw, you saw the, the, the story title and you, you, and the name of the show is named after the first segment. And if you go to iStake.tv, you'll see that the title of the article actually is Oregonians Fear the Choice to Pump Their Own Gas. No, I'm not going to read the article, but I do highly recommend, since I wrote the article, that you do go to iState.tv and read the freaking article. It's a long, it's an editorial. It's a, it's a little commentary about, uh, well, yeah, about the joy that is being an Oregonian. I, I liken them to hamsters in a cage that you let out and they, they immediately die because they're much more at home in the cage than they are out in, in the wilds of, of gas station land where, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny. Did, did you read the tweets? Did you read I, the tweet? Any I, the tweets? I, I, I have. What, what, what do you mean the tweets? I read some comments. I got some comments queued up then to, to talk about. Right. Well, those comments probably came from Twitter. I would imagine. No, they came from comments on an article by KTVL. CBS 10 News that said, starting January 1st, Oregonians can begin pumping their own gas. Hold on. Wait for it. Wait for it. In rural areas. Not all of <laughs> Oregon. <laughs> Only in rural. It's like, yo, man, we know, we know what's going to happen. We've seen Zoolander. We know what happens in Zoolander. <laughs> They're going to light it up. <laughs> We're really you know the rules. They vote. They vote conservative Here, anyway. It, you, know? you know what's funny is. You know what's funny is. I would be. I'd be willing to wager that the the graphics for their local news channels was like a lightning. <laughs> lightning bolt. <will> fuel <laughs> Mageddon. <laughs> fuel Mageddon. Oh, I love that. You oh, know that's how they played it. Oh up. man. <laughs> That's a meme right there, dude. You gotta make if you don't make that you can meme smell, I will. You can smell the sulfur through the T V screen. <laughs> so so they You'll ask begin. So they ask the question, do you think Oregon should allow self serve gas stations statewide? Now let me ask you. Well no, they shouldn't because Mad Max. <laughs> I mean you you know. If you do you want Mad Max, cause this is how you get Mad Max. <laughs> That was my Archer impersonation there. As some of the responses from some of the people in Oregon were about that. They came right. Maybe they didn't quite cross that line, but you know, if you got that person talking for about a good twenty minutes, you, they'd med max. Well, well, crap on well, that. well, we'll get to the comments, but I wanted to ask you first: What do you think of a news station which is run presumably because of how we live in a a a credentialed society. We don't live in a meritocracy so much as we do a credentialed society. So you got to have that degree. So you're talking about bachelor degrees, you're talking about master degrees, you're talking about PhDs. These are the people that are allegedly running your news station. And these are the people who thought that putting a question, do you think Oregon should allow self-serve gas stations statewide was a good question was a reasonable, that was a, this is a reasonable debate to have, dude. Should the state allow you to pump your own gas? That's the question. <laughs> right. You just take right. that in. That's at the core of it, at the heart of it. That's what they're asking. That's, Recoil and horror. That's, no! Whoever no, is don't let me their do social media whiz, whoever <laughs> they are, they thought, yes, 
this is a ponderous question. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Should the state let you right. poop where you want to? Well, within reason, I guess. I don't. I never mind. That's not good. I was going to say, should the state let you poop where you want to poop? Uh, I don't know if I necessarily want somebody <laughs> coming into my house and pooping without my permission, and preferably in the toilet. <laughs> I was going to say, <laughs> in the toilet is the best place to poop in my house. As a matter of fact, right. it's probably the only place, hypothetically. Yeah. If Socially I get acceptable. To. Right. right. <laughs> Socially acceptable. I have a good story. <laughs> Let me tell you a story. Okay. Let me tell you a little story. Give me your story. We were teenagers. We were teenagers. Yeah, you are. It's a feces story. We were teenagers. We were at a friend it's, of a Wait, wait. What house. did you say? We it's were teenagers. Feasting or fisting? Which, which very oh, very wow. distinct different words. We we're, we were at a friend's house. We we're having a little party. It was a friend of a friend. Okay, so a friend of mine decided it would be a good idea to go into this guy's kitchen, get a pan, take a shit in that pan, <laughs> with the original intent, with the original intent of taking that turd in a pan, back and putting it in the oven. Wow. So was there the, any somebody, type of somebody inspirational imbibage occurring during this right, period? So someone someone came and knocked on the bathroom and he got he got scared. So he took that pan <laughs> and he put it in the shower with the turd on it instead. <laughs> uh, fully intent on coming back to finish the deed. Well, well as yeah. the night went on and things got a little more hectic. You kind of forgot. lose track of your turds. If you're not on top the of them, you lose track of them. That's perfectly reasonable. I, I mean, when I say kid, when I say like we were teenagers, we were like fifteen, you know, fifteen, sixteen. Okay, probably you know, at an little, age it's not that home, maybe this kind of stuff, you know. So yeah. anyway, the the pan in the poop is now in the shower, totally forgotten about. Next day, uh, we get a phone call from uh, from from this person wanting to know who it was that pooped in the pan because the person who found it was his dad. <laughs> In the morning, when he came wow. home from work, <laughs> who was it? I mean, that's that is one of those sentences that, is that you're, you know, if somebody were to theoretically come to you ahead of time and say, "Okay, of all these sentences, which one do you think you're probably never going to hear? Which yeah. one of <laughs> you left your poop in a pan in the shower?" <laughs> right. You're gonna say that one, right? <laughs> You didn't see that coming. <laughs> you did not see that coming. So, so the the whiz kids at the the radio at this TV station thought that it was a reasonable question to ask: Should the state allow you to to pump your own gas? And I'll I'll read the. Let me let me get the. I and if you no, go to iState.tv, you'll find this story on the front. And unlike others that that showcased the comments from from the derpage i blacked out their names i protected their legacy because i am convinced <laughs> that their children's 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 children will have to live down the derpage that these folks display they will I'm, have to and they will be made to answer <laughs> they will be made to answer right. now i didn't realize until afterwards that all the respondents were women that i ha ha happened to select and I didn't realize it till well after the fact that I thought, like, well, they're all women. I, I didn't necessarily try to pick all women. It just kind of happened. So this fine lady, she said, I don't want to pump my own gas. Hate the smell and having to get out in the winter in a skirt. No way. So, so let me break that down for you, Niz. I don't want to stink, so... I think it would be cool to point government guns at you to prevent you from doing what I don't want to do. That's, that's, you, you got a different interpretation right, there? That's at the core, right, that's at the core of it. I that, mean, yeah, that, that's, that's and, that, and that's with anything. That's with absolutely anything. I mean, it doesn't just stop at pumping gas. It's any of the other myriad of incidents. Tint, tint laws, window tint on your car. Well, the tint laws are so that the police can make sure that you don't have anonymity. That makes sense. Can't have anonymity in the state world. It, that would no. be. So the guy has a little meter that he checks to make sure. Yeah. No, it's a, right. It's if it's if it's twenty percent, you're good. Nineteen percent. Mm -mm. Yeah, right. Sorry, that one percent of sunlight coming in makes a total difference between 
something you can get killed over and something you can't. Right. You got to define a line somewhere. And you know, it's like, you know, it's it how how hard would it be to say uh 20% even though it said 19, but you know what? He thinks there's some juicies inside that car. By juicies, I mean tickets, I mean arrests, I mean points, baby. For me, Mr. Officer. So so <laughs> This next one is even better. No. Disabled, comma, seniors, comma, people with young children in the car need help. Not to mention getting out of your car with transients around and not feeling safe, too. This is very bad. This is a very bad idea. Grrr. Said the add... oldest living resident of Oregon. No, no, that was Transient. a six, that was a sixteen-year-old Bernie supporter. You gotta be careful when you're driving down by the train station. All them hobos and tramps and <laughs> no, that was a sixteen-year-old Bernie supporter, dude. That was a that was a sixteen-year-old Bernie supporter. No, oh uh, probably, <laughs> probably an elder. Probably an elder. And and yeah, by the be... way, you could be eighty and not be an elder. When I say an elder, it's a special. But wait a minute. So, so this isn't even, and this isn't even that they are going to say, okay, all service stations now are going to be self serve. They'll still have full service gas stations if they right? choose. It's a choice. If they choose. As, as I okay, the... as I pointed out throughout this article, which you should go to at iState.tv because I don't repeat that enough. This is not about restricting choice. This is about enabling choice. What's interesting is, you know, Oregon, I'm, I'm, it's a very left-leaning state. I'm sure they're extremely pro-choice when it comes to abortion. How are they not pro-choice when it comes to pumping your own freaking gas? I don't, <laughs> I don't get that. I thought you guys were like, you know, what? pro-choice and all that. So as I point out, this, this law, actually, it's not a law. It's just to undo a law. To, well, I guess it's a law to undo a law, whatever that is. So it's a repeal or, or in it's this case, it's negative. not even a repeal. It's it's double just negative. Looking, yeah, it's a double negative. Yeah, the cumulative so, sum is zero. <laughs> well, yeah, this whole story is zero. But there is lessons to be learned here. Uh, I don't know if we'll get to them. <laughs> I, I I've got I've got another one. You want me? I got one for you. Okay, go ahead. Does no one consider the cumulative effects of breathing in small amounts of gas over time? Lung cancer rates will skyrocket. Who knows no, how this? Will I think that's other a troll. Body systems. I'm gonna bet that's a troll comment. I'm I I saw that one. I skip. I tried to avoid the ones that I thought were troll comments. I think that's a troll comment. I'm gonna bet that's it's a great. Great troll comment. If it's not a great troll comment, it's really scary. But in this case, what this person essentially is, they, they, they pulled the elder card. They pulled the, but what about the kids card? And they also pulled the fear monger card. All in the name of ensuring that they could justify. Right. Pointing government guns at other people right. to prevent them. They, they from literally a went choice. as far as to say, "What about the kids?" Literally, literally, <laughs> literally. <laughs> oh, literally. What about the kids? <laughs> so then this. Uh, and by the way, uh, uh, in honor of Lou Fien, or Lou Sander, who will be on tomorrow night. By the way, uh, support the thin fuel line. Say no to self serve. Just wanted to throw that in there. So then we get to the, the next respondent here that I chose who said, not a good idea. There are a lot of reasons to have an attendant helping. One is they need a job, too. Many people are not capable of knowing how to pump gas and the hazards of not doing it correctly. Oh, gosh, my throat is drying up. <coughs> Besides, I don't want to go to work smelling of gas when I get on my hands or clothes. Oh, when I get it on my hands or clothes. I agree. Very bad idea. <coughs> hey, hey, what, what cards did they pull in this one? 
Oh, this is it, it, they're they're being like the the bleeding heart. There's not many people are not capable of knowing how to pump gas. They're like elitist. What are they? What are, what is she really saying there? What is she really saying? What she's really saying is that unless you are in some sort of official capacity, you're an idiot. She's a dangerous neighbor. She has a fundamental mistrust of her neighbors unless they have official capacity. Despite the fact that, and I might be wrong about this, but I don't think I am, most gas station attendants, they're probably not from the highest skill set, generally. I mean, I, I'm, she, I'm, I'm going to say that this person is not that deep of a thinker, really. <laughs> You're going out on a limb there? And it really just stems from that elitist attitude? Because if you continue on in that comment, she continues, this is a service only qualified people should perform. I will literally park at the pump and wait until someone pumps my gas. I can't even. I can't <laughs> even. Uh, Usually when somebody I says can't I can't even. even, that means they have no brain cells. So that's like a dead giveaway. If you're dating anyone and they say I can't even, run. Run right. as fast as yep. you can. Uh, yeah, yeah, she pulled the my jobs Run. card. She pulled the my jobs card, right? She, yeah. she, <laughs> she pulled the my my idiots card. The oh, the government is really. I mean, well, it's the a, entitlement card. I will literally park at the pump and wait until someone pumps my gas. Yes. That, that's not the most entitled statement I've ever heard in my entire life. You park at that pump and I'm going to call the cops. You're going to get arrested because I can't sell gas from a pump that you're sitting in front of. I'll, I'll, I'll say this isn't necessarily the best one, but it, it, it really encapsulates Oregonians. Such as, such as now the stereotype will be for quite some time. I mean, really. I mean, I've seen other people say this. They didn't come up with this. But still, Florida man is kicking back and, and, and smirking. When you get Florida man smirking, you know you're done screwed up. Yes, screwed yeah. up. <laughs> when even Florida man is going, oh, gosh, oh, gosh, oh, gosh. I can't, <laughs> can't believe how stupid right. these people are. <laughs> <laughs> you know he's he's oh, riding his gosh. his lawnmower which is on fire and he's naked and he's riding it through the hugging the an alligator. Club. What's that? Hugging an alligator. Right, <laughs> right. right. Man, he, and while he's doing that, he's checking his phone. He's going, "Oh man, them Oregonians." <laughs> right. Whoa. He's like the the heat's off me for a bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. At least a week on this one, buddy. Thanks for the Maybe. reprieve. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Now I can really do stuff. Ain't nobody <laughs> gonna talk about it. Alligator, it's time. <laughs> uh, I don't even know how to how to pump gas, and I'm 62, native Oregonian. <laughs> I say no thanks. I don't want to smell like gasoline. Right. I'm 62, and In I cats. <laughs> holy moly, 62, and you don't know how to pump gas. That. That is incredible. That is I, I, the thing is the thing that I don't understand is they're making it out to be like it's this complicated like we got to get you know NASA better send scientists over here to to figure this complex system out here. How do you put gas in a car? <laughs> yeah, Call MIT, get MIT on the phone. You know, uh, th th you got a point there. That you, you maybe you're swaying me. I'm thinking, oh, you know, that's it's yeah. You got a good point. I, I'm I'm going to read a little bit from this. I'm going to, which is basically, this is my summary of what I think it is. And then I'm going to ask you to summarize, and we'll, maybe we'll go on to the next story. I don't know if we have time for another story in Newsfire. But when Spartacus led the slave revolt, revolts against the Roman oppressors back in 70 BC, he had come across a group of Oregonians and attempted to free them. Uh, the Oregonians turned on him and his other liberty-loving friends and begged the Romans not to free them from their bondage. True story. And one of the slogans of Oregon is, things look different here. <laughs> yeah, they do. <laughs> <laughs> they, they do. They look like the land of the willing slaves who are afraid of their own neighbors. They're afraid of the free market. And they are willing to support, by any means necessary, 
the continued pointing of government guns at people who dare wish, seriously, they dare wish to simply have a choice to pump their own freaking gas, all to satisfy their self-righteous sense of being good people while continuing to support tyranny and to protect them from their petty, immature fears and, and, and lack of skill. I want to end this, my, my, my little rant here on a, on a good note. I, I'm going to skip a paragraph here. The good news is this, that if these people see others living outside the hamster cages and prospering, then, and only then, will many, not all, but many of these people explore the possibility that maybe, just maybe, life inside the hamster cage is not the life for them after all. They perceive, and may be right, that outside the hamster cage, they won't be able to provide for themselves the basic necessities of life. And that can change, and it can change through people like me and Niz and you watching working to demonstrate that, yes, yes, you can provide the basic necessities of life. Yes, you can pump your own gas and then some outside the hamster cage. Take, take, wrap this, wrap this segment up. Go ahead. <laughs> oh my God, dude. Okay, listen, you know what? You, here's, here's what you just, I am you Spartacus. Just did, right? I was just, I, I was, we were just watching Modern Family the other night. It's the episode where they're in the park, and uh, Phil signs up to sing a song or whatever, and uh, the pharmacist goes before him and is like a, sings like a rock legend, you know? Yeah. And then uh, it's Phil's turn, and Phil is, like, uh, all deflated because, like, what the heck am I going to, how the heck am I going to show this one up? <laughs> he, he totally set me up. I built it Here up. Here it sliding like, in under the wire. <laughs> Here, yeah, right, right. Take Here it away, dude. Sliding in. Sliding in under the wire, right, I got right, the, straight from work. Got my work shirt. Right. Had I got no. Nope, I, I got all the preparation. You got shit. none. Like Here's Bob with a prepared speech. <laughs> yes. I worked first. on this for twelve hours. You, okay. Right, you wrap it up. <laughs> <laughs> Time's Stop yours. Time's head. yours. Come on, you got something to say though. I mean, this is this is a teaching <laughs> moment though. This is. And and these are the these are the type of people that you have to be afraid of. Oh gosh, yes. These are your neighbors. I don't necessarily want to say be afraid of, but at least be leery of. I guess you can say like you get. You know what? You got to keep an eye keep an eye on because they'll turn on you in an instant. Oh, they, they're all instant. government operatives just waiting for the police state to emerge. That's that's exactly what they are. For people like you and me, maybe this is. I don't know if this this isn't necessarily a wake up call for me, but it's just another. It just gets a greater sense of urgency, dude. I got to do what I got to do so that I could like not be surrounded by all these folks, so that right. when when the these S are the hits people the F, that you need to protect yourself from. Yes, yes, they they will be. These are the recipients that will be at your door when the S hits the app, right. and they're not just these looking are the for grass, sugar. the grass blade measurers. That are out right. in full force, and right. your grass, your grass is three inches, and it has to be two inch and three quarters, right. and three inches, and yours are three point one two five inches, and then you know that that's that's this yeah, guy. Like there's a you know if there's a noise ordinance, and you know you got by by ten p.m. it has to be down to a twelve decibels, it's, I'll say whatever, and it's ten oh one, and you're at twelve point two decibels. Cough, cough. What's that? <laughs> right, right, right. Ten o'clock and thirty seconds. Phone is already <laughs> dying. <laughs> it's the law. If you don't want to get in trouble, don't break the law. So we're. I think we're done with newsfire. We're going to go to our next segment. Our next segment is Skynetter, and we're going to be talking. Well, the first story. I don't know how long we're going to spend on the first story, but uh, we have. And this, I picked this just for you. I think it's a great story for you. Scientists developing custom DNA that expands letters from four to six and beyond. Come on. That's, that's well, like, that's a heartwarming story there. That is, that is incredible. We're going to take like a, a one minute break. And when we get back, we are going to discuss going from four DNA letters to six, maybe 12. 
maybe more. What can we design with that many new DNA letters? We'll, we'll discuss that when we get back on the other side. So stay tuned. It's only a minute break. Don't leave us. If you do, I will cry. If you want to think outside the box, sometimes you have to wear outside the box. All of your outside the box threads can be found at agora.threadless.com. Go to agora.threadless.com and find the right outside the box threads to fit your outside the box head. That's agora.threadless.com. Go to the Agora and less. You are listening to iState.tv Ziz Daily, where we expose the reality of power around you and the opportunity to change that reality to favor individuals and free associations. If you like this podcast, please be sure to go to pay.iState.tv and sign up to be a monthly iStater. And now let's get back to the show. You are listening to Is Daily Wednesday with the one true Niz and Paul Gordon, featuring Newsfire, Skynetter, and Liberty Tech. And now, here are your hosts, the one true Miz and Paul Gordon. Yeah, we're back. And we were discussing a lot of stuff during the break and trying to figure out the angle that we're going to take on this. Uh, I I think it's a deeply troubling story. I think that Niz, for you, you have a different perspective. This is kind of something that you're embracing. Is that the, is that the right read for this? Uh, I, know, I don't know. I I know you I think, seem I think to. I'm, uh, I'm on the fence, maybe a little. You're I on guess. The fence? Because deep yeah. inside, you're like maybe they can maybe they can make me. I always wanted to be a tiger man when I was a kid. I wanted right. to be a tiger dude. Tiger right, like man. the island of Doctor Moreau. Yeah, yeah, right. absolutely. So maybe they can go into Wasn't my Val DNA. Val Kilmer, the tiger guy in that movie. What's that? The Val Kilmer was he in that movie? Oh, I, I I haven't seen that movie in ages. I, I think you, I think he was. And I think was he? There the was Tiger a remake King? with like Dennis Hopkins. Yeah, or yeah, whatever yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, there's two Island of Doc Morris, right? <clears throat> and at first I was thinking of the old one, and then you threw me off and you said Val Kilmer. And it was like I was in the 30s, and I was like, wait, a <laughs> oh, you, oh, that one. So yeah. let's play our little segment bump here because everybody needs a video segment bump, so you know what we're doing. Is it only a matter of time before the robots enslave us all and turn us into factories that supply the lubrication for their moving parts? Well, maybe it's just around the corner. Skynetter covers stories of dystopian tech for the walls and for the pondering. And for those that can actually hear that, that is my daughter. That is my daughter that does the voiceover for that segment. The voiceovers are done by my wife, my daughter... And some really handsome guy, really, really handsome guy. I could say that objectively. So, so are, are you on the article itself? Do you do you want to cover this? Do do you want to take the lead on pondering this whole? No, I don't. I don't even see it here in the list, man. Dude, it's it's right up in there on the top of. Uh, are you are you on the show? No- uh, you know what? Let let me let me send you the show notes, which. Maybe should have been oh, done before the show. Hold on, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna send you the show notes there. There you go. <laughs> first, first, first. The title of the show is first. They pump their gas. Next thing you know, anarchy. That's the official title <laughs> of the show. So the title of this article is Scientists Developing Custom DNA That Expands Letters from 4 to 6 and Beyond. This is just a little news blurb on, on iState.tv, and you'll find it on the front of the site right now. You'll see a picture of DNA with a little copyright thing over it because, you know, you know, that's another thing. They don't really touch on that, but, but if they're going to design new DNA, yeah, they're probably going to patent DNA. You know, you know what I just thought about is that what this is like Gattaca, this, dude. It, 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 do you think that this could possibly open the door to biological computer systems? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, imagine if you can imagine if you can manipulate DNA in such a way to grow a central nervous system 
that's capable, that's designed and very specifically designed to interface with machine parts. Can't can't go like wrong with that. Well, imagine, or you could maybe you could use the DNA to create the biology, and then as the thing is growing, you could go through because they can they can actually manipulate uh, cells and restructure cells now using 3d printing so <laughs> so what they could do is they could yeah, you, you know, know that there's some crazy build the government machine scientist. in what's that you know that there's some crazy government scientist in a lab buried deep beneath the ground in some bunker somewhere that is uh literally doing all this stuff as we speak and then Growing the next generation with the yeah biological robots and then the next generation will be biological robots that design the next generation. So then they will be the ones to design the DNA to create the biology that they can then, while it's emerging, if you will, coming together, growing, growing up, little baby, becoming a, an adult, whatever, that they're then also inserting the the purely mechanical parts so that it more naturally integrates together and then and then you get to the singularity right isn't that the singularity right yes merging of man and machine where yeah there there is no such thing as man and machine anymore it is mamma mamma what is, what is <laughs> i'm i'm trying to figure out how to say I, it i was trying to combine <laughs> words and like mamma machine right. that's not right that right. that doesn't sound like so this is from <laughs> Quanta magazine, and it says, for de several decades, scientists have been cultivating ways to create novel forms of life. <laughs> well, of course, with basic biochemical compounds and properties far removed from anything found in nature. I mean, that's what you'd want to do, right? Like, let's try to get sure. as far away from from nature as possible. Let's as just... possible, right? Because that's how you get a T virus. <laughs> Like these these people working in these labs are like. So, have you ever seen any like nineteen fifties uh, sci fi horror <laughs> you movies? Like George Romero? Nope, <laughs> nope. Never. Don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> that makes sense. George, like George Romero movies. How do you feel about zombies? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> have you seen Attack of the Killer Tomatoes? <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Nope, nope. Uh, you know, That's it's not it's, a surprise. It's, it's, it's cool on one side because there there there's some really uh, interesting possibilities down that road to, to you know like you said with the uh, integrating biological systems and stuff like that um, kind of cool um, at the same time though kind of scary because like this is how you get like I said this is how you get a T virus man you're you're the you're, thing you said you're creating you get... things that have never been created before yeah. This is this is how you create something that quickly turns into a billion things that quickly turns into a planet right. that has then pretty quickly the planet itself is invaded from without and within and it becomes an organism a a, a machine animal organism floating through space right the earth becomes uh, cyber a living it's like in that what what movie did i say? oh oh guardians Cybertron. of the galaxy guardians of the galaxy cybertron, cybertron. Right. okay right. no but i mean in guardians of the galaxy where the the dude's dad is like the planet in him the planet is him and he's right. just like a part of the planet you know he goes out but he has to come back to the planet because the planet's him that's <laughs> That's what you get here. Do you do you want to have sentient planets that take over the universe? Because that's how you get sentient planets <laughs> that take over the universe. Again, right. that's my my cheap <laughs> Archer image. So, sorry about that. I'm man. He's about parched. about three or four hours ago, all of a sudden, my throat is like, you know what? I'm gonna lock up on you, son. So, uh. What what they're working on, they have there's there's four letters in they're called in uh 
uh, okay, take any organism on Earth and its DNA and RNA have four <coughs> nucleotide bases or letters, usually abbreviated as A, T, C, and G. And in RNA, another base, U, takes the place of T. But it's still, in RNA, you still have only four. So those letters constitute an alphabet that ultimately spells out how to make proteins. But for this to happen, the cell first has to read and translate that alphabet using a set of rules to genetic code to decipher its meaning. <coughs> you know, simple stuff. By adding a fifth and sixth letter to DNA, which which the Scripps researchers, led by Floyd, I hate humans and I want them all to die, Romsberg, <laughs> uh, a chemist, have formally labeled as X and Y, the number of available codons explodes to 216. I don't know what a codon is, but it sounds like they got more options. So... Sounds important. <laughs> it sounds. I don't know if important <laughs> is the word or. I mean, this is Skynetter. This is the Skynetter segment. So this is dystopian <laughs> tech. I'm not saying that dystopian tech can't work to your advantage, but you know, I, I do want to say I'm going to add a little religion into this. Uh, just a just a little bit of religion, a little challenge, okay? Because you know, you know, back in the days of Genesis, if you believe Genesis. Uh, the Tower of Babel, uh, human, humans were all united as one. They all spoke the same language, uh, and uh, they were building a tower to heaven. Now, I'm going to tell you, they weren't building a tower to heaven because heaven isn't up. Heaven is another plane. They were building a, a device to transport themselves to the other plane, to heaven. And God looked at that and he's like, dude, they're getting they're getting too much like me. Let me go ahead. Let me go ahead and just just I'm just gonna go ahead and babble them. That's where you get the word babble, confusion. So he uh, he gave them confusion so they couldn't talk to one another and and the collective human intelligence was divided. Now it's coming back together. So so if scripture is true, I'm thinking it's just a matter of time before something happens. Otherwise, if it doesn't, <laughs> the reset is coming. If it doesn't, then maybe you're going to look at scripture and be like, "I don't, you know, now that we're actually transported to heaven, I don't know. I don't know if this whole I don't know if the revelation you know, scenario is going to work funny. out." It's funny that you brought that up because I was just thinking about that the other day. I was literally just thinking about the 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 Tower of Babel and that whole story and Yeah. <laughs> you like read my mind, dude. I I think a lot of people freaking are thinking about it though. It's uh, freaking me out, man. Freaking out, man. But you you think about it cuz cuz human beings are really close to doing some stuff that if if they actually accomplish it, if it happens, yes, I mean, once you reach singularity, scripture is no longer valid at that point. Once scripture singularity happens, if man and machine become one, I don't. That's I it, don't, right? It's game over. That's it. It's game over. You're gonna so, have to go. Did you see that? Did you see that dude from Google? Did you see that which, guy from Google now has his own church. He started his own church. Uh. The future it, of the way, or something oh, like yeah, that. The yeah, way of yeah. the future. Worshiping Where they worship AI. AI. Right. Yeah, that's. I think we've talked about that. I don't know if you and I even did, or it was on one of the shows. I don't think shows. we did. I don't know. No, Maybe I did. talked about that with Bodie. That might have been a Bodie show. So <laughs> yeah. So you know, I'm I'm actually I am a Christian. I do believe I believe in Scripture, but I'm like God, dude. Mm, it's getting close. Something. <laughs> I'm not saying it's the end. I'm not saying it's like revelation, but something, something probably is about something ready to happen to stop this. Or scripture is going to go away. That's kind of where we're at. That's you know cheerful. Hey, this is Skynator. This is just <laughs> good time. Happy times. Yeah, yeah. Happy, happy times. <laughs> so 
I don't know. Do you do you have a do you have a quick story or anything before we get to our last segment here? Which we're gonna be a happy it's a happy segment, dude. We got a happy segment. We've got Liberty Tech coming up. Yeah, let's do let's let's do Liberty Tech. Let's do We're it. gonna go to Liberty Tech. All right. We're gonna go to a yeah. break. And when we get back, we're going to be talking about where is it? 3D printed electronics about to get even smaller. Now, when we cover this story, there's technical stuff here that I don't quite understand. I tried to get definitions of things. But but the general gist of the story is they have found a, a material that they may be able to use to create even more efficient and smaller uh electronics that you can print out which enhances the ability for 3d tech to print complete electronic devices and that's that's what we're going to get to after our words this is just a quick one minute break don't go anywhere you're going to want to stick around and you're going to want to hear because like, especially now that i i brought you to the place of doom and gloom well really niz did it's his fault uh we're, we're gonna we, we've tore you down, and now we're gonna build you up. We're gonna we're gonna leave you with hope, kids. But you gotta stay through the one minute break to get to the hope. What? You haven't subscribed to iState.tv's YouTube channel? Are you insane? Get yourself over to u.iState.tv. That's you as in unique. And subscribe now to get all the latest video updates coming out of iState.tv. And since you're already there, you might as well hit that bell to get immediate notifications as soon as the video goes live. That's u.iState.tv. You as in unique. We'll meet you there at u.iState.tv, where video meets the iState. It's all fear and loathing in Stadium on State Base Land, but that does not need to be the case. What are the stories you're missing that might counter that fear and loathing? You'll find those stories and more at iState.tv, your home for news, views, podcasts, and more that exposes the reality of power and shares opportunities for tilting the balance of power towards individuals and free associations. Go to iState.tv now and be sure to register on the site to get daily updates sent directly to your email. You are listening to Is Daily Wednesday with the one true Niz and Paul Gordon, featuring Newsfire, Sky Knitter, and Liberty Tech. And now here are your hosts, the one true Niz and Paul Gordon. You are the one true Niz, and I am Paul Gordon, and this is Liberty Tech. And just so you know it's Liberty Tech, I'm going to play a little book. Our coercive associations being outmoded by technology. On Liberty Tech, we cover stories of emerging tech that suggest the days of coercive associations, even large-scale centralized operations, may be numbered. That's right. Large-scale operations may be numbered. And a big part of that large-scale operation possibly being numbered is 3D printing in general. If you go to iState.tv, you'll find 3D printing is definitely one of those fields that I'm regularly tracking, so you'll regularly find stories on 3d printing there also really tracking uh, micro electronics and this story kind of combines them both and, and often stories about micro electronics and 3d printing actually do actually do work together but this is this is about 2d printed electronics and it's a uh, it's it's about it's a there's a Japanese team that's come up with something. They're able to build a material that is atomically thin perovskites. Do you, do you have any idea what a perovskite is? <laughs> uh, they've created a high performance dielectric nanofilm using two D two D perovskite nano sheets. And if wow, you, you can tell me like exactly you know what that is in layman's terms, I'll give you a dollar. <laughs> that's you know that's my my problem. What 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 I get from the story <laughs> beyond the I mean I I could read you a, a, a section here. Uh, in this unique system, perovskite nanosheets enable precise control over the thickness of the perovskite layers in increments of 0.4 nanometers, one perovskite unit, by changing m and such atomic layer in engineering enhances the high k dielectric resp 
response and uh, local ferroelectric instability. This all makes sense. Right. I'm hoping it makes sense. Right on. That cleared it right up for me. Well, I, I got a definition of uh, the K, K dielectrics there. The term K dielectric refers to a material with a high dielectric constant K as compared to silicon dioxide, of course. High K dielectrics yeah, are used in... Now, parts of this I'm going to understand. Parts of this you're going to understand. High K dielectrics are used in semiconductor manufacturing processes where they're usually used to replace a silicon dioxide gate dielectric or another dielectric layer of a device. Now, what is a gate device? Well, I looked that up. For small-scale logic, designers now use prefabricated fa logic gates from families of devices such as TTL 7400 series by Texas Instruments. I won't read all these things. And the more That's recent descendants. I actually, I, I actually, I actually sort of understand the stuff that you're telling me right now. <laughs> you do. The actually, you, I have you, no you idea. You work what in electronics, is. right? So you understand maybe. But the bottom line is that this basically allows them to create uh, uh, electronics that are much smaller, and these 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 gate devices. They it's just on a chip, man. Like like what the gates are, uh logic gates are are like uh, uh just they're switches that depend on whether whether or not each line coming into the switch has a charge on it. So like when they talk about like your binary ones and zeros, it's those gates that determine whether the output is a one or a zero in each particular spot depending on the current that goes to them. So if one line is like if it's a if let's say it's an it's an and gate. So an and gate needs both inputs need to be charged as a one in order for it to have an output as a one. So if both inputs are not one, let's say like the left input is like a zero, meaning that it's off, then the output of that and gate will be zero. Okay. So these gate devices they uh the field programmable nature of programmable logic devices such as FPGAs has reduced the hard property of hard hardware it is now possible change to to change the logic design of a hardware system by reprogramming some of its components the way that i'm understanding this before they needed different hardware components for different switches i guess but now they can have one hardware component through software alone can do both functions. Is that correct? That makes sense. So yes. that enables them, of course, to you know get things in a smaller smaller space. So this is, <laughs> I mean, this is you know this is powerful for my dream someday. Uh, right now, three D printing, you can't just press a button. You can't design a, a an electronic a. Uh, uh, a complicated electronic device. Right, you're not then, printing out a cell phone. Yeah, you're not. But this is bringing you closer to being able to print out a cell phone. Yeah, this truly this is the, what we're what we're seeing with 3D printing itself are the the seeds of the replicator devices that you see in sci-fi shows. That's mm -hmm. being handed here. They're they are the seeds of that technology because once once you have the ability to print these things out from your home, why do you need to go and why do I need to go to the AT&T store to buy a cell phone if I can print one out on my printer at my house? It's 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 going to completely change the marketplace. Yeah, yeah, it's it's and so what's going to happen most likely is the powers that be the one way that they'll probably envision to be able to control this 3D printing that will enable people to, I mean, if you've got the resources, if you've got the materials, you'll be able to 3D print from your home or at the very, at the very, I guess the worst case scenario is you will be able to, your, your neighborhood, 
your your small little community area will be able to to manufacture complicated sophisticated hard to develop uh devices products whatever uh at significantly less of a cost and at, at the small scale level that that will enable them to create products that no longer have to they, they no longer have to be so homogenized they can be your local area has very specific types of needs that you'll end up producing very unique products to your local area. I mean, this is this is a game changer. So what they're going to do is they're going to use IP. IP is going to be the big thing. Everybody's going to try to copyright everything. And you know what it's going to do? Because, you know, what do people do now that can't afford cable? The bootleg baby, they do whatever they got to do. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of IP. I, there's gonna be it's gonna, they're gonna create the uh, the the black market the the uh, the agorist market it's it's only going to grow in leaps and bounds and you're gonna see people that are gonna participate in the agorist market who who aren't ideologically driven they're not like eh, screw the state I want to end the state no it's like dude I I just you know what I can I could pay a gazillion dollars because I have to pay all this my IPs or or I could pay ten cents <laughs> and get my iPhone. Right, or, or, or right, right, right. Or I could just three D print myself a new TV based off the design from Toshiba that was leaked to the torrent site that that you use. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean. Absolutely. Like, this is like I'll just yeah. This is like like C Cody Wilson. What he's doing with his uh, uh, defense distributed. Uh, yeah, they 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 designed. 3D printed guns, and I mean, they do have a product now that they sell, but they've released, you can build the product yourself. If you want to go out and build their 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 ghost gun or machine, you can, you can get this. It's outsourced, dude. You, you can build your own ghost gun or machine if you want. And that's, I mean, like right now, we're on OBS. We're using OBS. That's open source, dude. There's, it's, a, there's a huge open source right. movement. So, so good luck. And, and I hope that, well, yeah, I hope that they work as hard as they can to try to control this. Because the harder they work, the more they're going to drive people to that agorist marketplace. People that are, they're, they're, they're again, they're not, they're not going to be ideologues. They're not, they're not rejecting the course of enterprise model. They're just choosing a path that that makes their lives a little easier and a, a little bit. more less costly right you could save some money you save some money and then in the process right, of experiencing that you start to experience juxtaposing the reality as it is emerging that individuals maybe thanks to technology thanks to our shared cumulative understanding combination thereof maybe Maybe we don't need coercive enterprise models anymore. Maybe they're not offering the benefit that they once did. Maybe we can actually provide safety, security, stability at a much smaller scale without using a coercive enterprise model. Maybe. I don't know. But th Much that's... more efficiently and much more friendly. Much more efficiently, much more friendly, and much, much cheaper. Uh, so... So, so hey, yeah, there's a lot of hope out there, folks. So don't so don't get snowed in. So there, we ended with a good story. We we got two minutes left here. So well, you want to wrap? You you got any last uh, last 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 words? Any last words? Are you happy to be <laughs> back? Got, by the way, after the big hiatus, you got any last words? You got any last words? Go ahead. No, I mean, other than uh, other than I can plug I can plug Friday night show. Oh yeah, you got uh, to do Friday that. Night, you can come on over to lrn.fm. That's the Liberty Radio Network, uh, and you can listen to uh, myself and Matthew Taylor at 10 p.m. Eastern on the Tortured Report. We blather on about all kinds of nonsense. So yeah, uh, one of the best things actually over there is the chat room is pretty good. Yeah, I I never get to listen good to chat. your show. I, I keep saying this to you, dude. Dude, I would listen to your show if I had a reliable place to listen. Right. To I'm the, the archive Nazi. I'm the archive Nazi, and I say no archive for you. 
I, I need an archive, dude, because because I'm never available. I'm hardly ever available at that time. Yeah, for reasons. It's that Friday night time slot. That's a tough slot, man. That's a tough slot. That's a tough slot for me because it's we family, come on right family after night. Free talk. We come on right after free talk. So like most people are like, "Oh, free talk's over. You turn it off." <laughs> right. <laughs> and and I see the her. free talk live notice. You know, I see. Free Talk Live, live stream on YouTube. I see that. I get the notification. I don't really watch it, but, I mean, I get the notification. There's nothing like that from you, dude. You know? Yeah. I'm missing out because I like your show. I'm I'm actually on it sometimes, so I definitely like your show. So so figure out that archive thing so I can listen. Yeah, I can listen Saturday morning. That would be great. That would be fun. You got to do it. Yeah, make it happen, dude. Just you're gonna get a lot more views if you can archive it. This show's I, uh, gonna be archived. I, I actually record. I do record most of the shows if I remember. If I remember, I record them. But sometimes okay, I don't put remember. Put them up somewhere. So I'm not good at that. Put them up. Not good. At... Even if you just put an image and put it up on YouTube, do that. Seriously. And with Something, that, anything. I'll say tomorrow. I don't know what our stories are yet. Uh, I think I think Lou has at least one story that he wants to talk about. By the way, Lou Sander will be on tomorrow night with me on uh, Is Daily. Is Daily Thursday. We're going to be talking about shorter leash, longer leash, and off the leash. But you want to listen to Freedom Fiends tonight because he's actually also going to be covering what we talked about for our first story. He's going to be talking about Oregon. I'm anxious to hear his take. On Oregon. He's doing a solo show tonight on Freedom Fiends. So be sure you listen oh, to Freedom boy. Fiends, our co host on on Is Daily tomorrow night. And we'll see you tomorrow night. Same channel right here on the Liberty Principle Facebook page. That's Facebook.com slash no consent to gov. That's the number two gov. And go there. And we'll see you. I am Paul Gordon. And you are the one true and is. And uh, uh, we'll be back for Is Daily Wednesday, next Wednesday, same time. And I'll be Bye. back on Is Daily Thursday with Lou Sander tomorrow, same time. We'll see you. And I, I still haven't come up with a last, like, goodbye thing. I have to come up with, like, right. a... Like a like a sign off. I still don't have a sign off, but I will yeah, eventually. You need your, you need to find your wubba lubba dub dub. Yeah, well, there, you're up here, you're running in there. Wubba dubba dub dub. That's my uh, <laughs> that's that's my guy right there. All right, we'll see you tomorrow night.